Hey guys, so doing a video on valve lash, valve set, whatever you want to call it, for your B series Cummins. So it'll be 12 valve, 24 valve, they're all, the process is the same. The engine that I'm doing today is a 12 valve, uh, but the only difference between a 12 valve and a 24 is that there is a bridge that goes in between the two valves. The process is the same. So, um, uh, now I shouldn't say completely the same, it's very, very similar. So um, let's get after it here. The, so for 12 valves setting it up, you need to find your top dead center. Now, if you don't know how to find top dead center on a 12 valve, um, the easiest way to do it, sneak over here, is to, now there's usually a pump in the way here, so it's not quite as accessible, but I haven't put the pump back on this, so I figured I would do that. This is an engine that I'm just, the used engine I'm putting in one of my trucks. But, this right here is your is your time pin so if you roll the engine around you will feel that snap in now if it's really sticky usually what i do on them is i there's a little metal retainer i pop the metal retainer out pull the plug right out and usually i'll use my bore scope or a um a mirror to see when it's lined up that's the easiest way to do it especially for doing valve lash um that by far is the easiest way to do it so for finding your top dead center now, there is a couple other ways, but that's the easiest way on these. Now, when you do that, one thing I do recommend, now the front of this engine is not together, but when you do that, if on your engine, you're going to have a sensor right here that comes to the harmonic balancer, which is your crank sensor. If you just take paint marker, something like this, and mark on your harmonic balancer, then you know that that's top dead center, which depends on whether it's one or six. This is top dead center compression stroke number one is where we are right now. So I've already lined it up. And also if you have this front cover off, this dowel is always gonna be standing, is always gonna be straight up and then your timing marks are right here. So if this is lined up and your time mark is straight up, you're awful close to it. Now, I pushed the pin in just to make sure I was in the right spot, force habit. So that being said, let's go on to the valve lash side of things. Not a super long process. And some of this I might put into time lapse for you guys just to make it so the video isn't really long. All of the, like I said, all of, all of these are the same way. So um, I'm gonna set, there is a debate whether you do 10 and 20. So uh, 10 intake, 20 exhaust. You can do eight and 18 as well. Um, for this one, I'm doing 10 and 20 just because I will be in here retorquing and everything because we just did a head gasket, O-ringed and, and did a head gasket on this, hasn't run yet. So, and these, now these rockers, when we machine these, these actually aren't even the original rockers on this thing. So if you were to bring this to a machine shop and have the head surfaced and the rockers done, pretty good chance, well, I shouldn't say pretty good chance, you need to do a valve lash. So that, just take that into consideration. Um, you know, if you're in doing something on the engine, it's not a bad idea at least to check it. So we're going to get into doing this now. Um, on this one, sometimes, like on the common rails, it's uh, an Allen key. I can't remember what size it off the top of my head. And then the nut is the same size. It's actually 14 mil. I use a 9 16 because it's a little bit looser and I find it a little easier to get into. Now, the easiest way on this, because we know we're top dead center compression stroke number one. You're going to do your valve lash. It's really easy to know which ones to do because I know lots of people don't know which ones to do. It's very easy to do. So your number one, you're going to do intake exhaust. And then on your next cylinders, see how this one's down. So obviously you can't do it when it's down. So your intake exhaust, intake exhaust. And then what we're going to do is roll the motor over 360 degrees. And then we're going to do, now we're number six is on compression stroke. So we're gonna do intake exhaust and then do the opposite of what we just did, right? So your intake, exhaust, intake, exhaust. Make sense? So we'll get after doing this here quick. So intake, exhaust, intake, exhaust. And these are gonna be way out to lunch because like I said, they're not even the right rockers off the engine, so. 
And as far as drag goes, you, there is some feel to it, but when you, like that's too tight in my opinion. So there should be drag. You should feel drag. Now, if the engine is, is oily, you're gonna have a lot less drag because it's a lot more side. Yeah, that's too tight. <laughs> so you should have some drag there, but you don't want like an astronomical amount of drag. So now that was doing 10 on the intake, 20, but now we're doing 20 on the exhaust, same idea, and rinse and repeat. So I'm gonna roll it over now. So we're gonna go 360 degrees. We got some pressure. Well, that's good. And all I'm looking for is the line to be straight up, or the pin to be straight up and down while I'm doing this. <clears throat> so now, because we already did these ones, we're now gonna do the other ones. So something you should do, probably not a horrible idea to do, is should mark them. I mark them usually. So we just did exhaust, intake, exhaust, intake, and then we did both of these, right? Because then you know that they're done. If you happen to get a phone call, somebody shows up, you stop for the night, whatever it may be, you know you didn't finish. Like I said before, it's the same process over again. So start with the exhaust because we're going to do this one just loosen this all off here quick now obviously there's not a lot of stuff in my way so it can be a little harder when there's stuff in your way but not a big deal so something too if you are going to be monkeying with these trucks all the time something i recommend to do is take a, a uh keychain and some bent allen key or allen keys um feeler gauges and put a 10 and 20 because then you don't have to worry about trying to figure it out all the time myself personally that's what i do all right guys to recap we just did the valve lash on this thing um, now, if you're doing a common rail, something I did want to mention to you is on a common rail that you don't have a timing pin. There's This timing pin is not a thing. So if you're doing a common rail, when you bring, I'll, I'll take a picture and show you. Um, I have one right there that, that, that'll be marked. I'll pull it out and I'll take a picture. So... You'll see it right now in the picture. So... On the on those, the top dead center is going to be straight up and down, and the harmonic balancer is marked like I showed you in the picture. Now, if you're doing a VP44 engine, on the front of the cover right here, it'll actually be marked TDC, and you turn the pump gear where the um, woodruff key is in the pump gear straight up and down, and then that is top dead center. So... Just take that into consideration. If you're doing a common rail or a VP44, that is how the easiest way to tell. So the common rail obviously is the easiest one. You can just roll around until top dead center straight up. And all you're gonna do, if you're just doing a valve set on it per se, you're just wanna, gonna want to, if you have it on top dead center, you're just gonna wanna grab your rocker on one and two or uh, on number one. If it's tight, that means that you're on compression stroke number six, right? So you can either, go 360 degrees around again and bring it and start with number one 
and do it, or you just work in the opposite direction of the way that I just did it, obviously, right? So that way you would be, you know, doing your exhaust, intake, exhaust, intake, exhaust, and then roll it over and do the same thing. So hopefully that helps a guy out. And uh, remember, it's not rocket science.